Welcome back, all my beautiful people. How are we doing today? Doing good? Nice. So I just want to bring you guys back into the topic of deportation. I know we were talking a little bit about that with our boy, Justin Bieber. And uh, something actually happened at my restaurant re recently where I work. It's called the Little Mexican Cafe over in Main Street. And uh, we had this one table. Another waiter was taking care of him. Mind you, this guy's a Peruvian waiter. He knows what he's doing. He's been there for years. And this one table, they happen to be of African-American heritage. Mm -hmm. And basically what happens is um, one of the customers asks for a side of rice and beans. So the, the waiter puts it into the computer. And then he's going to get the, the side of rice and beans. That sounds good. Yeah. I'm actually hungry right now. <laughs> Me too. I'm starving. <laughs> but anyways... At the end, when the, the waiter gives the guy the check, there was no rice and beans on his table, but he got charged for it. So they were going through a whole little thing. The lady there was pissed off about her being charged for something she didn't pay for. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, um, this lady's asking for the manager. She's like, who's the manager? Are you the manager? Pointing out different people. Then the hostess comes by, and the hostess just uh, says, you know what, fine, I'll take care of this. I'll give you guys a discount. And she asked me to help her out to get the discount on the computer. So I show her how to get it for $15. And then the waiter that was serving that table was saying, no, no, don't give it $15 off. Just give it to them for free. So as he's walking back into the kitchen, the guy who was sitting at the table said, now that's not right. And he just stands up and he's following the guy into the kitchen yeah. and he starts hitting him <gasps> and punching him. Oh, my God. The waiter doesn't do anything because, you know, he knows that by law, if he's in the restaurant, he can't really touch the guy. Yeah. Legally, he's, he's smart. Mm -hmm. So this one dude just pummeling him. And then eventually he gets out of the kitchen. I didn't see what happened. Wait, so the person that didn't want to pay for the meal, he's the one that attacked the waiter? Yeah. Okay, then what happened? And then right after that, after he stops pummeling him, he goes back to the table, and the lady and the guy just get up, and they go to the front to talk with the hostess, and they're just saying, hey, this is wrong. You know, I have an education. I have two degrees. You know, that should have never happened to me. Is this That's because we're up. black? That kind of thing. And then I was just like, yo, what are you talking about? You're educated, and then you over amp a situation where yeah. the guy probably wasn't even being racist you just saying that you want the rice and beans for free i feel like some people are just very sensitive you know what i mean and i just feel like they're probably having a bad day they took it out in the wrong way the very wrong way he obviously has some anger management issues <laughs> yeah now <laughs> but that shouldn't have happened i, I mean i hope th is the waiter okay yeah he's fine now thank god and yeah we didn't even get into the deportation part yet yeah so we'll mind you uh this lady said you know what I'll talk to you tomorrow. You guys will be hearing from me tomorrow. So mm -hmm. she posted something on our Facebook page, and she also posted something on Yelp that showed that she was a little bit ignorant with what she was saying, saying that she's got master's degrees and this and that. Meanwhile, she calls him a Mexican waiter in the post when he's Peruvian. Mm -hmm. My God. So what's up with that? And then she also says she's going to call immigration services to come to the restaurant and check everything out. And mind you, we have at least probably seven people who don't have papers there at the work, so the restaurant will probably close down. And also, these people will lose their livelihoods. They have nothing back in their home countries. That's, That's why they're terrible. here. terrible. Oh, my goodness. You know, I feel like there's a difference between, like, going to school and studying, getting an education, but and being educated. Yeah. I feel like it's easier these days, if you have money, obviously, to go to school and get an education. But there's also a difference between getting an education and being educated. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't... It doesn't take just like all like, you know, learning about calculus or whatever. It's also like street smarts. You have to be, you have to like respect other people, you know? Yeah, that's it. It's you a just whole different, a whole different ball game. And those people are perfect for each other because they seem to lack respect mm -hmm. for other people. Yeah, I mean, it's, that shouldn't have happened. I feel really bad. I'm sorry to hear that. I know it's disappointing, but c'est la vie. Well, I feel like Karma's going to get her, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> um. So, yeah. So, did you watch the Grammys? Actually, I didn't, but I heard a few things like like you were just saying Usher wasn't there. Yeah, Usher wasn't there. I mean, I think there's a huge thing about like, m especially my friends. I feel like if they're listening right now, they're gonna come to the window. But <laughs> Macklemore won like al rap album of the year. At a boy. Against um, who was it? Hold on, I'm having a name block. Yeah, we need to figure that he out. He won against. Um, bum, 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 bum. Okay, I'll figure it out in a minute. But back to Macklemore, he had he, um, 34 couples got married at the Grammys to his song, Same Love. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah. And uh, Queen Latifah, like, was the ordained minister 
and they were like they were um gay all gay couples basically oh, wow. expressing their expressing their love for each other i thought that was a really cool thing i mean that's awesome it's that's so awesome yeah like madonna madonna was also marrying them so i mean Oh okay. man, my aunt. Having to, like, if someone asks you, how how did you guys get married? I'll be like, at the Grammys with Madonna. That's pretty sick. <laughs> yeah, that's that's fresh. That's out there. Okay, but yeah, so Macklemore won um against Kendrick Lamar. Ooh. Yeah, and there was a huge thing about that because everyone felt like you know, Kendrick Lamar is more like pop and like he's not really like full on rap, and a lot of people felt like Kendrick. Kendrick Lamar deserved it more and yeah. apparently so did Macklemore because Macklemore actually texted Kendrick and he was like listen I'm really sorry I robbed you you deserve this award that's good to hear though he mm-hmm. knows he yeah. knows his place at least he's humble enough he's humble enough but you I gotta th- blame the academy who's even in the academy? academy I don't know I honestly don't know I mean I love Macklemore I love Kendrick but it's it's whatever <laughs> you know yeah Lord her song Royals at 16 years old won a Grammy for Song of the Year. For, you know that song Royals? No, I, I'm not familiar. She's a 16 year old singer from um, England and she won Song of the Year at the Grammys. It's a really good song. I'm sure everyone's, I'm sure you've heard it, but you probably don't know. Yeah, like I probably title. can't recognize it. Yeah. yeah. Um, best Country Album surprisingly did not go to Taylor Swift, but I'm kind of happy because she she's not had, country anymore. She's not country anymore and she's already she already has so many awards like on her belt that I feel like there's no more room in her house. Yeah. <laughs> it went to Casey um, Musgraves for Same Trailer, Different Park. I've never heard her album, but I'm pretty sure she's good if she's won a Grammy, right? <laughs> yeah, why not? Good for her. Yeah. More power. And Best Rap Collaboration went to Jay-Z and Justin Timberlake for Holy Grail. I totally agree with that. I <laughs> yeah. love that song. Whenever Justin comes out with an album, it's fresh to death. He's taken over. Mm-hmm. And he's an artist that has been very humble from the beginning. You know, he was in the Disney, the Disney, like, the, the, the Mickey, Mouse, Mickey Club. Mouse Club, right? He's been humble. He's comes from a really great background. He's been so successful in this industry. You know what I mean? And from such a young age, if I think about that's it like my this. hope for like Justin Bieber, just like, I hope everyone forgets about his, like, arrest and he can be, like, the next, like, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> that's what we hope for, right? Just, uh, that's what you hope for, like, any artist, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, Best rock song went to Paul McCartney, Dave Grohl, Chris Novoselic, and Pat Seymour for Cut Me Some Slack. I didn't hear that one. I haven't heard it either, but if Paul McCartney's a, he's a Beatle, it's got to be good. Yeah, it has to. And David Grohl, so yeah, <laughs> that's pretty sick. What about Ringo? <laughs> oh, yeah. Best pop duo group performance went to Daft Punk featuring Pharrell, Get Lucky. Daft Punk, I didn't realize this before, but you know they wear those like helmets. like Yeah. What do they look like in real life? In real life? <laughs> that's a very good question. You know, my friend Paris, I tweeted that, and I was like, I wonder what they look like in real life. He sent <laughs> me a picture, but there are not that many pictures of them, like, without the helmet. I've never seen a picture with them without the helmet. But I feel like that's kind of good because they're getting a Grammy, they're getting the money, but avoiding, like, the paparazzi in real life. Yeah. That is, like, the smartest way to be famous. <laughs> but I need to tell you something. They don't even... Yeah. They're still the same people with the mask on because I noticed, like, they shake their hands. Like, you could tell they're nervous sometimes. Yeah. Which is interesting. They're not robotic, but, yeah. you know, it just keeps their faces closed. Um, best new rap... Ne- best new artist, I'm sorry, went to Malcolm Moore again. And did you see his um, Grammy advertisement? He actually went on a bus in the Bronx. He has. Did you see that on That's YouTube? That's my hood, but no. And he went... Um, he sang his song, Can't Hold Us. And he just went on as a passenger, like no one was paying mind. And the whole bus was like, yeah, like Macklemore's on this bus. It was crazy. I need to check that out, which it bus became, it was and everything. I know. I, sh- I should take the bus more often. Yeah. <laughs> it became um, an ad for the Grammys. So that was pretty cool. I mean, Macklemore is riding the, b- the bus in the Bronx. <laughs> That's humility right there. Um, best metal performance went to Black Sabbath for God is Dead. I'm not really into metal. But no, I'm not into metal either. Yeah. They do what they do. And um, pr- producer of the year, Pharrell Williams. At a boy. Did you see that hat that he wore to the Grammys? I missed it. It kind of looked like an Arby's hat. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what everyone is comparing it to. And the Dimmodome, a, owner of the Dimsdale Dimmodome. Yeah, there's a BuzzFeed <laughs> article like, what's he hiding under the hat? He really made a statement, you know what I mean? Because that's what everyone was talking about. Yeah. And I think that's what an artist or an actor wants to do when they go to an award show is make a statement and have everyone talk about them the next day. Yeah, but think and about it's it like this. three days later and we're still talking about it. Yeah, <laughs> and how is it that he got the award for producing? I never knew he produced. Yeah, he produced. I'm pretty sure he produced like Get Lucky too. 
I knew he was a producer. So I'm really happy for him. I think he's a really great artist. Um, basically, best country performance went to Darius Rucker for Wagon Wheel. Ah, uh, not even Kenny Chesney got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it was, it was a huge night. Beyonce and Jay Z opened up with a really like provocative. Um, so like her song, um, Drunken Love. Yeah, what else it is was new? So hot, like it was just the best performance I've ever seen. <laughs> I really hope that one day, love you, mom, but I really hope that like, they adopt me. I feel like they'd be like the coolest parents yeah. to have. <laughs> I wonder what their kids gonna think when, when she's growing up. It's like, oh, I can watch my parents in the Grammys. It's like oh. it must be incredible to like be the daughter of. They're like the two most powerful people in the music industry. Yeah, it's could you incredible. imagine? I mean, I can't even. It just feels like so surreal. You know what I mean? Um, but I'm also it's like, if I had to like have Beyonce's mom, it's like a lot to like <laughs> look up to. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Hopefully, also, you got a good babysitter too. Yeah. Lastly, best R and B album went to my girl Alicia Keys from Girl, girl. On Fire. I love her. Her music is so inspirational. It's just positive and warming Definitely. i remember no one back in like 2007 2008 mm-hmm. she just killed it yeah i love her um that's it for the grammys so the super bowl is coming up super bowl it is in new york no new jersey whatever same yeah. same vicinity yeah pretty much guys <laughs> pretty much Take the turnpike if I, know, I know the media day is in the city so it's i mean i'm excited the broncos and the seahawks are playing i'm rooting for the broncos i love eric decker i love manning um, did you watch the game before the Super Bowl with the Seahawks and the whole Richard Sherman, inc- uh, the Richard Sherman incident? I saw a little bit of it, but can you remind me? Well, basically, Aaron, he's obviously pumped up on adrenaline after winning a game that's gonna m- get like lead him to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Aaron Andrews basically wanted like a recap, and she was like, "How do you feel about the game?" I guess, and he was. We basically just like went off on Crabtree, who was like the opposing <laughs> guy on the other team. Yeah, I think I saw that and actually. He just like went. He was crazy, but it's like I can't, um, I can't really blame him because I mean he just won. He's won. It's basically a ticket to the Super Bowl, and he's hype. So as the British soccer announcers would say, he cannot contain his jubilation. <laughs> I mean, that's. And I feel like I feel bad because everyone's calling him a thug, but this is a guy from Compton. He had a four point eight. GBA he graduated wow. with. Two parents that basically have been working their whole lives. His father was a garbage man. His mother was like a nurse or something. A school nurse. Call him a thug. Call him what you want. He's got a reason to be excited. He's got a reason. He's he he's really humble, actually. I know he does a lot of charity work. Wow. Just because of that one incident that people say it's not classy does not mean that he is not a classy person. This is no. a guy who was pumped up on adrenaline. Your actions you shouldn't can't define you. Blame him. That shouldn't define you. And obviously, he's mad at some guy who's like talking bad about him. So who wouldn't be? I mean, you know, he wanted to yeah. make a point. He wanted to be like, look at me now. I'm the one who won. I feel like I would do that. <laughs> I think, yeah, Crabtree, I think he was just being insulted because if you're a football player you're that strong, you should never be able to yeah. be bullied. I mean, there should be sportsmanship, but um, at the end of the day, there's no reason to call him a thug. No. Like, he hasn't done anything wrong. Justin Bieber basically went drunk driving and whatnot, and he's not being called a thug. He's just asked to get deported. You he know what I mean? He just looks beautiful in his uh, <laughs> mugshot photo. So anyway, I mean, I'm excited for the Super Bowl. How about you? Super Bowl, yeah, I'm pumped. I'm going to be at work that day, unfortunately. I feel like my boss is going to let us, like, live stream it, but I'm also going to be laughing at everyone in the stadium because it's going to be freezing. Yeah. It's going to be, like, the f- I feel like the first really cold Super Bowl we're going to have. You know how they have thermal underwear? Yeah. You know how they have hand warmers? Yeah. If they could combine the two, they'd be rich, whoever, <laughs> whoever comes up with that. I know. But, um... I hope the Broncos win, honestly. I really hope so. Yeah, and Tebow can watch together. all the way from Canada. Yeah, Tebow. I mean, if I think he invited <laughs> Bieber to watch the game with him. <laughs> <laughs> Tebow is actually a sports agent now. Did you hear about that? Oh, I did not hear. Yeah, I mean, I think his NFL career is kind of given up on yeah, him. Yeah, so I think so. So he went another way. He's a sports agent. I feel like he'd he'd be really successful. He's still really good looking, which is probably that all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> well, to me. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, that's it for like. Co- pop culture and entertainment for now so should we go into the commercial break yeah let's hit it up with the commercial break i think you want to do a song by time flies yeah the new song called all the way all the way all the way sounds pretty fresh let's hear it turn it up this 
You'll come around 